Hi guys and welcome to this Red Gamer Tech video with myself and Marta. As usual, I'm here with the latest from the tech world in the last 24 or so hours. So what do I have for you today, my friends? Well, we're going to kick things off with something from NVIDIA, as of course the tech world and the gaming world is all afire with talk of the 20 series, and we have yet more on this particular topic today. So NVIDIA showed off some pretty impressive stuff, especially when it comes to the real-time ray tracing. And we saw a couple of pretty good examples in the presentation. I would say most notably the reflections showcased in Battlefield 5 and the shadows which were showcased in Shadow of the Tomb Raider. So we actually have had various reports on quite a few websites about the performance, the people who are actually lucky enough to be there in person at Gamescom. We've got reports from IGN, PC Games Hardware, PC Games N as well. And in all honesty, first impressions are looking a little concerning just judging from their reports. So what do they actually have to say for themselves, I hear you ask? Well. So the first report that I just kind of want to highlight is the one from PC Games N. And now, of course, they were there at the event, as I already said, running this with GeForce Experience, showing them the current frame rate of the game. Now, I just want to stress that they were using, at the time, the 2080 Ti, the very expensive, obviously, flagship. Obviously, the pricing of these cards has been a topic of some controversy, especially among gamers, because, well, it is a touch high, to say the least. And the performance at 1080p with ray tracing enabled is definitely going to raise an eyebrow at first, but I'll get to why perhaps we should put our pitchforks down for a sec in just a moment. So what do we actually see performance wise? Well, according to what they're saying, the RTX 2080 Ti was not able to hit 60 FPS at 1080p. And in terms of what frame rate it was actually reaching, it was between 33 and 48 frames per second. So again, that is with the real-time ray tracing enabled. Now we also see similar reports with Battlefield 5 as well, which again showcase some very impressive real-time reflections, which looked way closer to real life than anything we have seen previously. I will say I was very, very impressed by what NVIDIA did actually show. But they also showed a similar story to that which PC Games N found with Shadow of the Tomb Raider, that it wasn't able to hit 60 FPS with these effects on. And again, this is the story across IGN's report, PC Games Hardware's report as well. However, and this is a huge however, a massive however that we really, really must take into consideration, it's very important to remember that obviously the SDKs that the developers are working on are still early. The game itself, that being Shadow of the Tomb Raider, isn't out yet, so that's still being optimised, that's still being worked on. Of course it is only out in like three weeks, so I would imagine there's not a whole lot left to do there, but even ignoring that, even if you say that Shadow of the Tomb Raider is in a perfect state, no more improvements need to be made, which we both know is not the case, because obviously day one patches are always a thing nowadays. There is also the very, very, very important fact of drivers as well. Now, there is a reason that on the Battlefield 5 demo, the word alpha was right there in the corner where you could not miss it at all. So, obviously, RTX is still being worked on. The drivers are, not, are still being worked on not only for that, but for the cards themselves and obviously for the games as well. All of this comes together to obviously give us what we have. But the main sticking point, I would say, is that RTX itself is still being worked on. And even though Shadow of the Tomb Raider is out in just a few weeks, RTX itself, the support for it of course, is going to be added at a later date in a patch. So again, it's still being worked on, so we shouldn't panic just yet. Also something else to keep in mind as well is that we did not see any comparisons to Pascal with ray tracing off. We only saw the ray tracing comparison because obviously NVIDIA were really, really keen to push this tech. Obviously, I can't really blame them. They've obviously worked a long time, 10 years, as they kept saying. But that is also important to remember that we have not seen Performance versus Pascal just kind of vanilla versus vanilla, as it were. So if you're unsure if these reports have put you off or if the price has put you off or it's a combination of the two or whatever, just don't pre-order. Just wait for reviews actual real-time benchmarks for real-time ray tracing to be done for these games 
all this sort of stuff, all of this is going to make a difference. Now I'm not saying it's not concerning, because it is, because we're talking again about 1080p here, not 4K or 1440, but again, we should keep in mind everything that I've already said. So don't panic, just keep it in mind, I guess, is what I will say. And again, if you're at all unsure, just wait. Nvidia are well aware that these cards are gonna be popular, they're not gonna go out of stock anytime soon. Just wait for reviews, wait for benchmarks. That's my personal advice if you're even slightly unsure, especially given the fairly high cost, especially of the 2080 Ti. Now, speaking of the RTX 2080 Ti, we actually have a really nice look of the die itself of this particular graphics card, thanks to EX Preview. So they've obviously managed to get their hands on it and have shown some rather nice up close shots. And there's a few things, notable things that we do need to discuss. So the first thing that I want to touch on is the fact that the Turing TU-104 GPUs are based on a 12NM node, of course, manufactured in Taiwan, whereas the TU-102 is manufactured in both Taiwan and Korea. Now, there are rumblings that the Korean one may in fact be Samsung, but this is not confirmed. They might wonder why NVIDIA have made this decision. It's probably just so they are getting the very possible best out there in the 2080 Ti, given again that it is the flagship card, it's very expensive and obviously it is going to be carrying the weight of a lot of expectation I feel. Now Nvidia have done this in the past with Pascal, so this is not exactly anything new for them, this is not new behaviour. They have, again have done this exact same thing before where they had the entry level cards on one thing and then the other cards on another thing. So obviously they're just kind of following past patterns here, ensuring that they have the best nodes on the flagship cards and obviously still getting good quality for the rest, but they're not as hyper concerned, I guess, getting the very best of the best on those particular ones as they are with the 2080 Ti. Now, of course, we already know that the 2080 Ti does feature 4,352, so 4,352 CUDA cores, and the die is frankly huge, huge you could say. Now as Jensen himself discussed at Gamescom yesterday, it does have 18.6 billion transistors, which is a massive jump in comparison to Pascal. In terms of the actual clock speeds, we do see 1350 MHz base and 1545 MHz boost, and of course 11 GB of GDDR6 on the 1080 Ti, which is one of the main differentiators between that and of course the 2080. Now obviously there are other differences as well, but that difference is, I would say, the first most eye-catching one, at least for me. Obviously, we're just kind of getting a closer look at what we already knew about the card, you know, getting a really good look at the, you know, what is actually making this card tick inside and getting a really nice look at this really interesting new architecture. As I said, you know, 10 years in the making is uh, rather impressive. So it is nice to finally get a look, see, especially after all these months of speculation, 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 Lord, no more speculation. I'm sure there will still be more, but... Uh, at least not about this one for a while. So we're going to finish things up with Battlefield 5, of course. I did mention that earlier during the very first topic about the demos that we saw at Gamescom itself. As we do have some analyst predictions as to how this game is expected to perform. And again, this is an analyst prediction. This is by no means Mr. Meg going, hmm, this is for sure a thing that is going to happen in the future. Now, obviously, they're just kind of basing this on market predictions, all that sort of stuff. And according to them, things are not looking so hot for Battlefield 5. So what do they actually have to say for themselves? Now, according to them, the pre-orders for this game are quote-unquote weak, and they have pretty much reiterated their stock rating for EA, and they've also pointed out that the October release window for Battlefield 5 is rather crowded, I mean, as it always is that time of year, it's just literally just like, here's a bunch of games, good luck. So, obviously, get some game has to lose, or games... Obviously, we've seen it in the past, you know, Titanfall 2 just completely lost out because, you know, it went up against some serious big dogs, which is a real shame. Obviously, it still did really well, don't get me wrong, but I definitely feel it suffered from its release launch, uh, release date, should I say. And according to the analysts, at least, this is what's going to happen with Battlefield 5. It's going basically just going to get crowded out by Assassin's Creed, basically all in sundry. But according to them, the, the pre-orders for Battlefield 5 are tracking more than 85% behind that of Call of Duty, which is, ow, that's, that's like, mmm, I felt that in, in, in my heart, you know? 
I mean, obviously, Battlefield Five is not going to match up to the you know the juggernaut that is Call of Duty, but eighty five percent is not exactly a small. A small number, excuse me. Now it's especially important to remember that at least according to their data here, this is actually worse than previous Battlefield titles as well. So just to give an example, um, Battlefield 3 and Battlefield 4 lagged behind Call of Duty by about 20 to 40 percent and Battlefield 1 actually tracked ahead of Call of Duty at this point before launch. So yeah, not exactly looking rosy for Battlefield 5. Now of course again this is just based on their analysis and pre-orders and all sorts of stuff, you know, I think EA have definitely damaged the people's trust in them as a company after the whole Star Wars Battlefront 2 thing. People's belief in them has definitely been, well, torched to the ground pretty much. So maybe that's part of it, but I don't think it's any one thing to be honest. I think in this case it's conflagration or multiple things. There's obviously the whole controversy about the fact that, you know, it's been featuring women a lot, the fact that one woman has a bionic arm, stuff like that. There's a lot of controversy surrounding this game that is probably also not helping, but it's may even just be that there's so many games coming out at that period not even just in that month but just before christmas in general it's a very very competitive very busy period and obviously for most people they can only afford one or maybe two games because they're obviously very expensive so i, I think that's also a, a, the biggest factor if you ask me now the last thing that the analyst does mention is that EA's sort of target for this particular game is 13 to million, uh, sorry, 13 to 14 million, should I say? And according to the analyst, at least, there that is not looking particularly achievable. Now, unsurprisingly, EA have not exactly been overly keen to comment on these predictions, and of course, we're going to have to wait and see how true they are. But if things turn out the way they expect, it's going to be a bit spicy for Battlefield 5, to say the least. So that is me done for this video guys, thank you so much for watching, as always your support is highly appreciated, do remember to like and subscribe and of course do check us out on Patreon as well if you'd be so kind, your support whether it's just watching the video or whether or not you're one of our patrons it is truly truly appreciated so thank you so much, I'll see you next time.